this is so small, so cute. I've already forgot. As you may know, I am an iPhone user all along, from the first iPhone to the iPhone 10. But today, I have to review the an Android phone. Oh my god! But this is a pretty good Android phone. This is a OnePlus 5T. Just a few months after the OnePlus 5. They sent this phone to me in a big box with four other phone cases. But interestingly, they give you a phone case within the package. Kind of like rubbery those cases. Actually, I hate those a lot. When I get the phone out, I thought there's another piece of plastic I have to remove before I use it on top of the screen. Turns out this is a screen protector. They already have a screen protector applied. I think most people are going to like it, but I just hate screen protectors. It just you got you got dust around the screen protector. But that, that's the minor stuff. I mean most people love it anyway. Who the idiot don't use a screen protector? Which is me. So before I get to the camera, how to, does it take photos? Let me talk about some basic basic. This is a phone with Android system. <laughs> It got aluminium body, which I love because it's the same as iPhone, isn't it? Oh, I, I wake it for, for some reason. Like kind of slippery at the back, but I like that the edges are kind of edgy. So when you hold it, it's still really secure. Even though it's kind of big phone, it's, um, it's bigger than the iPhone 10. Well, it's big for me. Now the screen is a 6 inch AMO LED screen, whatever you pronounce it, someone would correct me, it's not AMO LED, it's AMOLED, something like that. The screen is quite noticeably bigger than the OnePlus 5, I was going to say iPhone 5. But the body is not that much bigger because they have a really thin bezel. This is something like a 2017 trend, isn't it? Everyone released a thin bezel phone. And a similar story to the iPhone 10 also because the iPhone 10 also got a much bigger screen than the iPhone 8 but just slightly bigger body. It got a Snapdragon 835 processor, whatever that means. It got a choice of 64 or 128 gigabyte internal storage. Around the edge, there's a power button on the kind of a normal where your phone will be on volume button and then this is unique to OnePlus this slider it got three position ring do not disturb and silence this is a really clever idea I have to say and at the back this is the fingerprint sensor I always find the fingerprint sensor at the back kind of weird you have to like kind of like fiddle to find it but some people say that you get used to it pretty quick though uh, I would prefer the Sony way of putting a fingerprint sensor and a power button this is that is really good i tried that before and then obviously they don't put it on the front because they got this huge screen if you put it on the front you keep pressing the home button also what i don't like is that when you put it on the table you can't just unlock it with your finger you have to pick it up to unlock it but talking about unlock because they got another trick up their sleeve is the face unlock if you put it on the desk you can't unlock it with your fingerprint you can just unlock it with your face and it works really really well i have to say this is so quick lock it unlock by lock and when it's facing me i click and it just unlock immediately <laughs> it's just at first when i after i set it up i just feel like have i actually locked it because every time i press it it just go to the main screen until i do this and then it actually locked when i put it on my face it and it unlocked and it even worked sideways and upside down iphone can't do that i have to be honest to you I have to admit to you, this works wonder. But what's the catch? The catch is that it don't work in really low light. Compared with the Face ID on Apple iPhone and like the Samsung Face Unlock feature, something like that, this doesn't use any infrared, does any high tech trickery. This only uses the front facing camera. But I tried that, it worked in pretty low light already i mean it don't work in pitch back but how many times you will actually in pitch back and you still got the fingerprint to unlock it if you if it doesn't work in pitch back and then oneplus admit that it's not secure enough for 
Android Pay to a full rise payment, something like that. Compared to iPhone or Samsung, their face unlock is secure enough for Apple Pay, Samsung Pay, Android Pay, and a full rise for any kind of payment. I'm not really familiar with Android system, but what I hate about Android system is those float square. Is it, is it how you pronounce it? Float square. For example, with Samsung and Sony phone, I'm so confused when I got to their phone and they got so many different apps. There are like two photo viewing apps, two different apps to do the same thing. And then when you want to update them, there's, oh, this, it's just so confusing. This, I don't see many extra apps. There's a community app for OnePlus. Of course, they got the, the launcher. That's it. Everything else are stock Google Android apps. It really feels like a stock Google Android phone. You log into your Google account and then everything just set up for you. Now those are all I think about this phone as a phone. Now what about the camera? How does it take photos? Now I have the phone out with me. This is uh, this is central of Hong Kong. This is kind of a historical stairs. I mean the stairs are historical something like that and and this market always got those party stuff those masks this and that and especially now it's Christmas auto white balance is pretty accurate generally pleasing but until you zoom in some shots just look like went through a photoshop watercolor filter while others seems free from that oh look at who's there beheaded it might be good time to try out the portrait mode on a portrait. Actually, I don't really know does it use two lenses. How about I cover one of the lenses? This one. Oh yeah, it do lens is cover. It showed me that lens is cover. It actually using two lenses. Portrait mode works pretty well. Actually, quite surprisingly well. Even on this pretty complicated image. Funny that it doesn't have a tele lens, but it do give you a two time zoom. You can even zoom in more. Four times. As expected, zooming in without a tele lens gives you lower quality picture, but nobody can tell that on Instagram. Just forget about the four times zoom. Now that's an XDR mode, that's an XQ setting as well. When I search on web, nobody really so sure what it is for. Some people say that it do better low light when you use HQ. HDR on this phone doesn't give you much differences to be honest. Now for video, this can take 4K 30p video with electronic image stabilization. How does it compare to another flagship phone of 2017? My iPhone 10. I know the iPhone 10 got opti optical image stabilization. To be honest, we are comparing two 2017 phones. To compare them, I have to mount them together. And you know as me, I don't use any other old shit. So this is a shoulder port thing. They make lovely product. Look at that, even the pattern here is wooden. And of course, wooden grip. This is so nice. Even the packaging looks really nice. And this phone mount, when I was in New York, going up on helicopter, they use this as well. So it's good enough for helicopter ride. All right, there you go. The 5T lens is slightly wider than iPhone in photo mode, but in video mode, it obviously cropped in quite a lot for the electronic stabilization to work. Electronic stabilization do works, yet it works over the top. It is really stable, but when it get too stable, you see motion blur without camera movement. You see robotic panning. It just doesn't look natural. And there's no way to dial it down. Again, auto white balance is generally accurate. Just sometimes give you fluorescent flowers. Well, usually, when you see two lenses on the phone, they will have one wide angle and one tele lens. Not here. They are both around 27 mm equivalent lenses. Both f1.7 the only difference between both lenses is one is 16 megapixel another one is 20 megapixel now so apparently the hq mode is better for low light but they also got 
obviously got two lenses. It said that in low light there is a what's it called? There's an intelligent pixel technology that merged four pixel into one so that it's better in low light so that it, it's basically it merged four pixel into one to eliminate noise. One plus said that when it's less than 10 lux it will use the 20 megapixel lens. So I'm not really sure am I having it now or not. When you're shooting the photo, there's no way to tell which lens it is actually using. Is it actually using the 20 megapixel and then scale it down something like that or using the normal lens? So I just I can I just have to guess. HQ mode do helps in low light in some situation. If you zoom right in, there is less light, more details. There is a pro mode that gives you manual control and raw files, but don't expect huge differences. Still, none of my pictures are in 20 megapixel. I just have to find out. So I told myself up a test with everyone's favorite test subject, your keyboard. I have an LED light that I can control the output. When I slowly turn down the output, it finally happened. It obviously switched to the other camera. So I find out the power that just trigger the lens switch and took a photo from each camera. It really gives you a 20 megapixel picture compared to a normal 16 megapixel. Interestingly, with the same shutter speed and ISO, the larger 20 megapixel pictures actually brighter and with less noise. So this is the OnePlus 5T. I like it that it doesn't overpromise. It doesn't have unnecessary bells and whistles just to make the feature list long. But when it promises, it works. I mean, I'm very impressed with the face unlock that only uses a generic selfie camera when early attempts from other brands seem pretty laughable. It doesn't have what the expensive flagship phones have, but it gives you the second best at affordable price, low BS.